Welcome to our section, how to find the domain of a function. First, let's start with what is the domain of a function. I'm pretty sure you have seen this before and you're wondering what it is. I'm going to give you a simple example so you can understand what is the domain. Let's say that you're going out of town and you have your little kitty cat. And you tell me, Vanessa, I want you to take care of my cat. This is all my house. He can go all over the house except my closet. Here, you're giving me a domain. You're telling me that your cat can be everywhere where this white area is except your closet. Your domain is going to be all the white area except the closet. How do I do that with a function? Well, the domain is defined as all the values that x can be or example let's say that we have something like this here I have a fraction my numerator is on the top and my denominator is on the bottom I need to remember the denominator can never 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 be zero so if you get a, a, a like a function like this one just go ahead and grab the bottom in this case x minus 4 and just make it that cannot be equal to zero and then you solve for x I do plus 4 here and then I do plus 4 here and I get that x cannot be equal to 4. What does that mean? The domain is x can be any other number, whatever number you think of, except 4. If I want to write this in integral notation, I can say that all the numbers from negative infinity except 4 in union 2, 4 to all the numbers that are from 4 to negative infinity. Therefore, any other number you want, but never 4. Let's do another one. Now I have here f of x equals to x squared over x squared minus 9. Again, just grab the denominator and make it that cannot be equal to 0. And let's solve it. Remember, x squared minus 9, it is the same as x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now let's see which values x cannot be. I grab the x minus 3 and I make it that cannot be equal to 0. When I solve for x, I get that x cannot be equal to 3. Moreover, this guy, I also need to solve it, and I know that x plus 3 cannot be equal to 0, therefore x cannot be equal to negative 3. Finally, my interval notation, which is a little bit long and annoying, is negative infinity to negative 3, union to negative 3 to 3 with union to 3 to infinity. Conclusion, x can be whatever it wants except 3 or negative 3. It makes sense. If you put a negative 3 here and I go negative 3 times negative 3, is, uh, that's equals to 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. Kaboom, I cannot have a 0 in the denominator. Now, what happens when I have a square root? Well, let's remember. A square root can never be negative. Therefore, I need to go ahead and grab what is inside, in this case 2x plus 6, and make it that it can be greater or equal to 0. And yes, you can have a square roots that are, that are, I'm sorry, equals to 0. Therefore, 2x plus 6 greater or equal to 0, and I have to solve for x. I pass this x, the 6 to the other side, and then I divide both sides by 2. Finally, I get that x is greater or equals than negative 3. Beautiful. Now that I have this, I can say that the values of x are, go from negative 3 to infinity. Let's do another one. Now, again, remember the square root cannot be negative. However, it can be 0. So I just grab what I have inside here and I make it greater or equals to 0. I divide both sides by negative 3. And don't forget, anytime I divide by a negative number, my inequality changes the sign. Therefore, x can be all the values that are less or equal to 0. It makes sense. If I plug a negative 1 here, negative 3 times negative 1 is going to give me a positive 3. Beautiful. If you want the interval notation, all the numbers that go from negative infinity to 0. Now we have the last one. Here you can see there's a combination between a fraction and a square root. So what do I do? Not a problem. Just grab again the bottom, which is x plus 7. 
And I remember, a square root can never be negative and the denominator cannot be zero. So I just write down x plus 7 greater than 0. Then solve for x, and I know that I can only grab all the values that are greater than negative 7, but I can never grab negative 7 because negative 7 plus 7 is going to make this equals to 0. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. And as you can see here, if you have a problem like this one, just grab the denominator and just make it that cannot be equals to 0 and solve for x. If you have something like this one, which is a square root, just a simple square root, just make it greater or equal to 0, and then you solve for x. Finally, if you get something like this, x plus 7 greater than 0, just do exactly what I did here. All right? If you have something like this, like a line or like a polynomial or anything that looks like this, the domain of these guys are all real numbers. As you can see here, I don't have a square root, I don't have a denominator, so I can be, or x can be whatever it wants. Beautiful. And the kitty cat is probably excited that you're coming home. Thank you so much, and again,